anatomy, musculoskeletal system, mandible, and hyoid bone. In this video, we're going to speak about two mobile bones of the skull, the mandible and the hyoid bone. Let's start with the mandible. We can observe that it is a horseshoe-shaped bone where inside we can distinguish a body, which is the curved part of the horseshoe, and then two branches. Originally, the mandible consisted of two bones that later merged and formed a single structure. What remains of this process is the so-called mantle symphysis, which is a slight depression in the central area of the chin that has two bark holes at the edges. The external aspect of the body is rather smooth, except for the tuberosities due to the dental roots. In addition, it presents a foramen, called mental foramen. The lower aspect is rather blunt and has a horseshoe shape. The internal aspect of the body instead is more particular. First of all, it is present at the level of the junction of the chin, an internal spine called mental spine, which allows the insertion of some muscles. Below this, there is a smaller spine called inferior mental spine. Foramina are present all along the body, while immediately under it, there is a slightly larger fossa, namely the submandibular fossa, inside of which is housed the submandibular gland. The structure that divides them is called the mylohyoid line, and it takes its name from the muscle that originates here and forms the base or floor of the oral cavity. Then, as you approach the end of the body, there is a tuberosity called pterygoid tuberosity, which is precisely where the pterygoid muscles originate. The upper aspect of the body presents the alveolar process of the mandible. It is a series of foramina that house teeth and form convulsive type articulations. Let's now move on to the description of the mandibular branch. Externally, it is rather smooth. There is only a short line called oblique, which divides it from the body. The angular part is called angle of the mandible. On the external part of the branch, there is a large tuberosity called masseteric tuberosity, where the masseter muscle is housed and inserted. We can also observe a process called coronoid, which has a very flattened pyramidal shape and provides insertion of the timbral masticatory muscle. Posteriorly, a branch leads to an ellipsoidal structure called condyle, through which the temporomandibular articulation forms. Between the two processes, we can find the suture. Let's now move on to the description of the internal aspect of the mandibular branch. On the inner aspect of the mandibular branch, in other words, considering from above the mylohyoid line, we can see, first of all, a lingula that limits the opening of our foramen, or, more precisely, the mandibular foramen, where the mandibular nerve enters to provide the innervation to the dental alveoli. The internal aspect of the mandibular branch is rather concave and has only a small ridge, called temporal ridge, where some masticatory muscles anchor. Finally, interestingly, in transparency, we can observe the course of the mandibular nerve, which, entering at the mandibular foramen, continues inside the bone, branching to all the dental villi, and finally exiting with a small nerve dependence at the anterior mental foramen. Now, Let's turn to the description of the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone is of uncertain classification because, theoretically, it could be considered part of the neck. However, its location makes it really difficult to identify it because it is free and not connected to any other bone. Its shape is roughly that of a horseshoe. However, it does not have only two arms, but four, called horns. The central part is the body of the hyoid and has a convex anterior aspect, a concave posterior one, and two very sharp margins. It is from the upper margin that the lesser horns or cornua of the hyoid bone that are connected to the styloid processes through the stylohyoid ligament originate. The larger horns or cornua, on the other hand, emerge as a direct continuation of the body of the hyoid bone. They head backward and upward, creating an obtuse angle. During their path, they first taper and then widen again at the end. They provide insertion for numerous muscles and ligaments. The hyoid bone is not only important for its bone structure, but more for being the attachment point for a very large number of muscles and ligaments, and as it is involved in numerous functions, including swallowing. This video was created thanks to Anatomy Learning, an interesting free web app. The hyperlink can be found in the description. Instead, the text used for the concepts is Human Anatomy of Eddie Hermes. Thanks for watching.